A couple of nights ago, we had another anchor dragging event between 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. Why it happens in the middle of the night, I don't know. There was a lot of misery and stress with 37 to 40 knots of wind. Every time we drag our anchor, we get really stressed out and can't sleep. So, how do we stop dragging our anchor? One obvious solution is to get a bigger anchor with more holding power. And we've done just that. We found a used delta anchor in a bigger size. How do you know if you're dragging your anchor? Either we see ourselves drifting backward with the wind, or one of our apps with GPS positioning sounds an alarm, something we absolutely hate hearing in the middle of the night. One of the apps we use is called Anchor Pro, and this is what a typically normal, non-dragging history looks like. We drift forward gently and backwards as a breeze pushes Blackbird in one general direction. Here's the 40 knots of wind night I mentioned a few minutes ago. We were all over the place. Anchoring 101. Our anchor looks like this and is called the delta. Ideally, you let out three to five times the depth in chain road. So if you're in five meters of water, five times three to five is either 15 or 25. So either 15 to 25 meters of chain you let out. You put your bow into the wind, drop anchor, and drift backwards with the wind. When you feel the anchor grab, you reverse the engine to secure the anchor. A couple of things to note. Once your anchor is set, you have what is called a bridle or rope holding the chain with the catamaran. This bridle simply helps hold the boat centered relative to the chain and limits the side to side swinging the boat does in the wind. When there's no wind, the bridle hangs straight down and with wind, it angles out in front of the bow as the boat pulls against the chain. When the anchor is set, the tip of the anchor points into the sea floor. So when the chain is pulled, the anchor digs in further. The chain road or extra chain sitting on the bottom is important so the angle of the anchor in particular, the tip of the anchor, does not start to point upwards. Again, this is what it normally looks like. As the wind increases, the boat moves away from the anchor, the bridle stretches out, and the chain road lifts off the sea floor. If there's not enough chain road let out or the wind is strong enough to lift all the chain off the sea floor, the anchor pulls out. As the chain is lifted, the tip of the anchor is also lifted, so the anchor is no longer digging in and you can pull it out of the sea floor. Here you can see a comparison of a gentle breeze versus strong wind or too little anchor road. One possibility is to include a large weight, sometimes called the Kellet, Anchor Angel, or Anchor Buddy, to hold the chain road down, as one of our viewers suggested. We're kind of going to use this solution, at least the theory of it. I texted my friend Jonathan about strategies that he uses and he sent me an article from Cruising World Magazine written by Roger Hughes called Stay Hooked from September 2021 issue. We're going to modify slightly the recommendation from Roger Hughes, but here's the concept. First, our solution is not a tandem anchor solution as is typically known. In a stronger wind, the boat is forced in the direction the wind is blowing. The rope bridle stretches out in front of the boat the chain resting on the seafloor no longer rests on the seafloor up until the second anchor. The weight of the number two anchor keeps the chain on the seafloor between the anchors, much like the weighted kellet or anchor buddy. There's no chain seen in the first primary anchor. Our primary anchor is now 25 kilograms or 55 pounds, and our number two anchor is 20 kilograms or 44 pounds. When we use them both, we have 45 kilograms or 99 pounds of anchor out in front of us. But wait, there's more. In a traditional tandem anchoring system, both anchors are shackled to the chain road. We're not going to deploy two anchors this way. Here's our system. From the left to the right, we have a new but used 25 kilogram, 55 pound anchor as our primary number one anchor attached to a new Mantis anchor swivel to allow more freedom of movement for the anchor and chain. About three depth distances away, so if we're in five meters of water, that is three times five, 15 meters away from the primary anchor, we shackle a two meter or seven foot length of one half inch or 16 millimeter Dyneema, which is then shackled to the secondary or number two anchor. This system allows us two independent points of contact with the sea floor. If the wind shifts, say 90 degrees, we have the benefit of two anchors working together. If the wind flips 180 degrees, the number two anchor still works, and it is possible dragging until the number one anchor is engaged. 
Our dining the line is one of my favorite parts of this system. One end is shackled to the number two anchor with a one half inch shackle. About two thirds of the way up to the chain end of the line, I spliced an eye loop into the Dyneema so we could cleat it off inside of the anchor locker, which I'll demonstrate shortly. And then the other end gets shackled to the chain road. We got a new Mantis uh, chain swivel. I'm really excited to try this out. In the box you get Teflon tape, some wire for securing the whole kit, this pin, which I'll show in a minute, this seriously heavy duty half inch shackle, and then uh, the rest of the swivel. So if you take the shackle apart, the sides come apart, and you can see how it swivels. And your chain goes in here. This pin goes inside your chain. This comes together. And you screw it together like that. So the pin goes inside the chain, and it's an oblong pin. And the shackle goes on this, and this attaches to your anchor. The Teflon tape is used around this kind of threaded area. And then the stainless steel wire, you're supposed to do two wraps of it around this area. And one goes in the shackle through this hole and around the arms of the shackle. How are we going to change anchors while using one of them? We decided to spend the day in the marina to make these changes, refuel, take on more fresh water, and also get some grocery shopping done. After removing the old anchor swivel from the lighter anchor, I noticed how little wear there was on the galvanized chain, which is a great thing. We basically had to pass the lighter anchor under the trampoline and set it on the deck. We tied two ropes to the anchor and Kay and I each had a rope. We did not want to drop the anchor to the seafloor at the marina. As Kay eased her end, I pulled on the anchor to get it over the crossbar and set it down. Here are the anchors side by side. The lighter anchor has some yellow paint on the top, so you can see it easier at depth. They might look pretty close in size, but the weight difference is noticeable. It's five kilograms or 11 pounds. We then reverse the operation to get the bigger anchor back into the chain locker. Two ropes, and we both eased it up and into the locker. With the bigger anchor secured in the chain locker, it was time to install the new Mantis anchor swivel. I had to install a few wraps of Teflon tape under the threaded outer cover. Then we installed the oval shaped chain pin and the chain. Then I shackled the swivel to the anchor with a beefy one half inch shackle. Here's the directions they give you, so why not show them to you? The last step is to use stainless wire to hold the swivel together. Two wire loops through the body and one wire through the bolt two times will do it. Make sure you twist the wire above the holes so you can tuck the twists into the holes. I also added some Loctite to the threads on the bolt. I don't know if it'll help or not, but I did it anyway. This swivel is sure a confidence inducing swivel. After having tried the system for over a month, we can report it works really well. After we have the primary anchor out and on the seafloor, we can usually take time out deploying the second anchor, which is stored in the chain locker also. The secondary anchor has to be attached to the chain road, which is under the trampoline. So the secondary anchor has to be passed under the trampoline in order to secure it to the chain road. This looks like it might be a pain, but it's really pretty easy to do. We have a pulley system for passing line under the trampoline, so we can send one rope over to Kay and she cleats it off. The other end is tied to the second anchor. I also have some line tied to the second anchor so that we have two lines to the anchor when we're passing it under the trampoline. 
Just as we did in the marina, we don't want to drop the anchor to the sea floor. And just as we did in the marina, we pass the second anchor over to Kay, who takes the fancy spliced Dyneema line and slips it over the cleat in the locker, allowing her to shackle the anchor to the chain road. Once she has the secondary anchor shackled and ready, we remove my rope. She takes the Dyneema loop off the cleat and lowers the second anchor into the sea with the windlass. Our timing is typically less than two minutes once we have everything in place. If we had to hurry, I think we could deploy or retrieve the second anchor in under a minute. To retrieve the anchor is the same thing in reverse. It's really easy to do. We've tested our system several times and had it hold fast in 30 knots of wind so far. I know someone out there is thinking there has to be a downside, doesn't there? No system is perfect. Well, you're right, no system is perfect. We wanted to see what would happen if we left the entire thing underwater for a week as we spun around the chain, often being blown 360 degrees several times a day. After a week, we pulled up our anchors and found the Dyneema wrapped around the chain road several times. This system was still working and minimally it was a weight holding down the chain road for the first anchor, but it was twisted around several times. For us, if we need this for several days on end, we'll pull up the second anchor only, unwrap it, and send it back down again without having to totally re-anchor. But typically, when there's low or light wind, we still just use our primary anchor. We want to thank Roger Hughes for the initial idea and our friend Jonathan for sending the idea to us. So far, we're very happy with our system and the confidence it has given us. We love to keep improving our anchor solution, so if anyone has any ideas, concepts, or anchors to share with us, please let us know. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Sailing Blackbird.